you know, he's wild. <laughs> and, you know, got the melon head and the hair and the eyes this big. And, and he's, hey, how are you getting all friendly and everything? And um, I said, who the hell is that? Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with B.O. Buzz Weekly. We are back with part two with the Animaniacs. Rob, Jess, and Tress, let's do it. Since your careers all began, a lot has changed in the industry, but one thing that hasn't changed is the fact that you guys are still jamming. You are working like crazy on lots of Amen. different things, yeah, how about which that? is amazing. Um, get snacks, look at IMDb, you'll be tired and have to start the next day. <laughs> but why do you think that is? Why wow. are you still... Gosh. So present and such forces in the Who wants to start? in the industry. That's a good question. Uh, I can speak certainly, and, and I, I will do this. I can speak on behalf of Tress. I think because <laughs> she likes no, and I know, and, and I know this to be true. He's also my spokesman. Because <laughs> <not, laughs> she retains you. <laughs> well, and I know this because I, I do travel around a lot and and meet a lot of people. And now I yeah. uh, I direct a, a show. Yep. And um, I it, because it's about. Talent. It's when we talk about voice acting, it's small v, large a. Mm -hmm. um, the reason Tress is successful, or Frank Welker, or Maurice LaMarche, or Jess, or Billy West, or John DiMaggio, is because they're terrific actors. It's not about a silly voice. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I know that because there are characters, there's only so much we can do. We're human. Mm. And there's a certain point at which you can shade a voice. And anybody who watches Tress a lot will go, oh, that's Tress McNeil. However, the characters, even though the voices are similar, the characters are utterly different because Tress is, a, is an accomplished Great actress. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Actor, yeah. And that's what it's about. It's why we love Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Jack sounds like Jack and everything. But, but he's, <laughs> yes. different he's different as the Riddler. He's different in Postman Always Rings Twice. He's different in- Cuckoo's uh, Nest. Yeah, in, in Cuckoo's Nest or Easy Rider. Something about Mary. No, just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, the spinoff. But that's what it's about. And That was and, so different, it was Ben Stiller. <laughs> and Tress has never rested on her laurels. It's very, honestly, it's easy to be seduced into going, I got a pile of money and working all the time doing my thing, but that's not what the creative process is about. And that's not what keeps you working. Yeah. Because yeah. Pr producers, they don't need any of us. Right. When it gets to a point where they go, I can hire anybody and I'm gonna hire Tress. When did that happen? Oh, I know, on Animaniacs, take two. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Spielberg could hire anybody he wants. For sure, completely. And it's not about celebrity, it's about performance. And that's why Tress, at almost 37 years old, has mm. remained <laughs> at the top of her game. Well, 37 and a half. Right. Ah! <laughs> but honestly, it's not, it's not magical. Yeah. It's no. professionalism and utter uh, commitment to the creative process. Totally. It's, it's, I, and and yeah. that makes a lot yeah. of sense. But you know, you know, for me, I, I got to add that, you know, I spent a lot of my time, and you know this very yeah. well because you guys know me very well. I spent a lot of my time just being grateful. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Like all the time. I marvel at the entire picture of my life because I realize that, you know, talent being talented is no guarantee of anything. No. And everybody's mm. talented. Everybody's great at stuff. You know, whenever anybody tells me about being talented, I go, dude, you can do 50 things I can't do. Everybody, you know, is talented. Yeah. So that's no guarantee of anything. And the fact that, again, as you guys know, with the guests that you've had on this show and all the demos that you do, you produce demos for people all the time who are great. I always say, anybody good this week? You go, oh, this guy was amazing and this girl was amazing. And ever since I started doing this, every time I get a job, I'm like, they could get Rob to do this. And Rob's amazing. You know, they could get Billy West. Why are they getting me? Yeah. All I am is grateful. Why just, are they getting you? I don't. I don't know. I think that. I think that <laughs> well, the reason is. I think no. Because you'll leave some accessories behind. Yeah, I'll leave some. I'll leave and some they bling. need some jewelry I'll for a gift. Bling on the table, and the kids can. <laughs> he have smells it. great. Yeah, I do. He I do does. that too. But here's the thing. No, I think that honestly, I think that the reason maybe, and then please continue with what you were going to say, Robbie. Is it? Is it? I think maybe the reason that we've managed to sustain at a high level all this time is because. They know we're gonna do a good job. They know we're probably gonna give them even more than they're asking for. And if they wanna reel us back, they can, but we'll always try to like, if we can make it a little bit funnier and add a couple of things they weren't expecting, we will. If they tell us to stop, we'll stop. Um, and 
I think I speak for all of us when my philosophy has always been in life, just in general. I want to be the guy that people are happier to see walking in the room yeah. than walking out of the room. <laughs> yeah. So whether they, if they could hire somebody. But can you repeat that? Because <laughs> yeah. everybody needs to hear that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you want to be the person that people are happy to see walking in than walking out, you know? And it's like, I, I think that the reason that we all do as well as we do is because we're cool, man. We don't yeah. come in with attitudes. We're not a pain in the ass. We're nice to people. We're friendly. We're happy to help out. And then we get out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And let them do what they well, want to do. Well, you just touched on something important. We try to give uh, the producers an embarrassment of riches. If yeah. they can't decide which take is the best That's, because they're all good. Then yeah. we've done our And job. Tress and That's I, I know the number of times I've worked with Tress before Animaniacs, yeah. we've all been in circumstances in which we see actors literally loading the gun to shoot themselves oh. in the foot. Yeah. Where somebody will say, I got two lines of this character and it's going to be the fourth character, you know, so it's a... Technically, you're supposed to get another session fee. But would and, you mind? Right. And yeah. you can see somebody going, oh, well, I probably should call my agent. And I'm going, oh, dude, dude, dude. dude, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah. Just play. Help them out, man. Just play. So that's how you start your career. Exactly. Yeah. They get, you get three voices on a contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to be the person who can do three voices. The you can voice. fill a contract. Yeah, sure. yeah. They, if they can get one person to do the job, then they want you. So yeah. you want to be that person. Mm -hmm. And so you are available for every job. Yeah, exactly. You are very You agreeable. never say no. You no, never, never say, no. say no. You don't argue. You just yeah. do your job. You don't be fabulous. You go in there and you build a, a momentum. You, you, uh, uh, you know, let people know that you are reliable and that you're cooperative and that you will do the funny cartoon show, uh, you know, you know, and be be very grateful for it. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And and that's yeah. the thing that 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 there's a common denominator here mm. is that you guys are very talented. And yes, you have the biggest garage in all of town. Right. Yeah. But you guys are grounded and you're grateful. Well, you know what? And people honestly, love that. Thank, thank you, Chuck. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, how dare we not yeah. be? Yeah. Exactly. Because but you'd be we, surprised. You'd we, be surprised. Oh, I, there's I, I that know, in, and, because uh, you guys don't have that entitled. No, God, I got this. And you I never we hate those guys yeah. because I've I've been in Hollywood for 41 years now mm -hmm. and, and they're still trying to get rid of them <laughs> totally <Yeah. laughs> and by the way Amway's not just saying <laughs> but, but we get to work with people and we have people in our circle like Frank Welker oh, gosh, who yeah. is profoundly gifted everybody oh, knows that yeah. Yeah. Right. but is the nicest most down to earth unassuming person Guy in the world yeah. when you encounter somebody who feels you know like they're all that you kind of want to go dude I, I really hope you save your money yeah because mm -hmm. you ain't gonna last you're not right. good yeah. enough yes. to be that yes. and that's another stupid. thing yeah. save your money so you don't have to have a job you go and you audition for a job and then you just let it go forget it yeah right. let it go that's it and uh i used to hope and pray that i would work once a month, no. uh, you know, just mm. just something to yeah. you know help out, you know, just one job a month, and then oh please God, once a week, and wouldn't then, that be something? Oh, yeah. once a day, <laughs> wow! <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> once, once a, uh, once a, a day? day. Yeah. That's and, bananas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's yeah. just yeah. like no, and, and and like Jesse was saying, it there are you know Hollywood, the battlefield in Hollywood is littered with people with gobs of talent who oh for some reason gosh. didn't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. certainly. There's an element of luck to almost everything in yeah. life, but as we as we I've said and lived that credo is that you know luck is when opportunity meets preparation. There yes. you go. And yes. when you're ready to hit the high heat right over the green monster, that's the way it can be. You can only do your best, and as long as you can leave a circumstance going, if they gave me an hour, I couldn't do it any better. There you go. Mm -hmm. Then it's up to fate. Oh yeah, yes. man. Uh, and it doesn't always work, and we know that. Yeah. But it certainly does. Um, like you guys, you have an incredibly successful podcast. Yep. There are how many? 18 billion podcasts out there? Yeah. yeah. You got to compete with them. Yeah. So if you're not giving people what they want, you're not delightful when people meet you, all those other things, you're not grateful. Right. Yeah. You're going to be in the dumper. Yeah. Isn't it amazing it's, just saying thank you, how far that goes? Oh, my God. How far that carries God. you. And yeah. we get better and better. Yeah. Because we, we're all just practicing and we're getting day. older. And yeah, yeah, every day now. Yeah, Tress. that's Look at right. You, Tress. Every How about day that? I get Gotta to pay for that garage, man. You're fancy, <laughs> Tress, with your daily work jobs. <laughs> so the first time, Rob, I'll start with you. The first time that you met Tress, mm -hmm. and not even an maniac, but the first time you met her, and maybe the first time that you met Jess, what was your initial impression? Oh, I remember. Oh, I met Tress in the lobby at SBV in 1979, mm -hmm. and I thought, man, if I had 
any juice at all, I will be all over her like. Oh wow. come on! <laughs> uh, come on! He looked like with he her was husband bad. sitting oh, right there. But I knew that, that was she cute was because he was very cute. Way he above my young. pay grade. <laughs> way above your pay grade. So I was, after you woke up, what happened? Honestly, I I was married at the time. That was yes. a problem. And I was yeah. twenty three so years that. old. <laughs> He had and a jersey on, a red a jersey, jersey with on. 22 oh. on. A said, Red right? Wings jersey? Ooh, 22. What is that? Was, no. The Red <laughs> Wings. It was Red Wings jersey, right? It was, actually. Yeah. yeah. And so... Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, he was 22. Yeah. <laughs> But and what um, was your first impression when you met Jess? When I met Jess, it was great because we were. I think the first time I met Jess was when we were at Soundcastle, yeah. when we, where we did the initial, not only the auditions, I'm sorry, not only the first episodes, but the auditions for Animaniacs yeah. and Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. And they also did. Uh, it was a record studio, R E C O R D Record. Remember that? Remember mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember How about that. Um, and I'll never forget this because Lemmy from Motorhead was. They were Motorhead was doing a record there. And That's when right. Jess walked in, I thought maybe he was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Makes sense. I totally did. Because he was wearing that outfit. Right. No, that that exactly. It was oh in God, the rotation. This is our buddy Jess. How cool is that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to be wacko. And he'll describe. <laughs> I'm from Florida. It's going to be wacko. Uh, and so, and what was cool though is, that, and this, this is the God on, on a shoot. <laughs> I don't know if it was that day, but one of the times <laughs> we were recording, oh, I was God. outside and, and Motorhead was Ed was still there doing a record. <laughs> they were. That's right. Lemmy comes over it's with a long that record. You know, yeah, giant, yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a giant thing. thing. He goes, "What's going on in that?" <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> we're, doing a, "We're doing a cartoon show." <laughs> and he goes, oh, it's bloody great. <laughs> <laughs> That so, uh, on Rob. Yeah, no, no, you know, uh, uh, the ice is spiked. <laughs> I thought, oh my God. I really thought that, that Jesse so was maybe in his band. <laughs> I love that. See how funny that is? Yeah, man. Yeah. Jesse, I want to know your first impression when you met Rob and Tress. Uh, well, you know, the thing was, and I, you know, I may have told this story on a con or two in the past, but I, I had a kind of built in advantage when I got into Maniacs because even though I had started doing voiceover and I'd been doing it for about a year at that yeah. time, you know, and generating a little bit of success with it, I'd never been a regular on a series yet. So hold on. So yeah. when you got Animaniacs, yeah. you were only doing voice for about a year? Yeah. Wow. It was fresh. What a way to you start. You were like dude. a little baby. Trish and I look at each other going, wait a minute. <laughs> We've been busting our <laughs> yeah. for 15, 20 years and this knucklehead walks in like he's from Hair Club you. for Men. <laughs> I just I quit Motorhead. I guess the gig of a lifetime. Yeah, he's I like, did. is this good? I is did. this good? And... Chicks love him. Girls <laughs> <laughs> like, like me because I'm funny. <laughs> they like him because he's hot. <laughs> you know, man. What's All right, Rob, you'll have a chance for rebuttal. Yeah, he's doing fine. He's oh. not worried about him. He's fine. But here's what happened, man. So I, I showed up, and I didn't know enough about the industry, the, the cartoon industry, yeah. to... And I know this sounds horrible enough, to, but to be intimidated. Right, which is probably what helped you. Yeah, it did help Truly. me. I mean, yeah. I don't intimidate easy, as you know. I've probably never yeah. been intimidated anyway. But I didn't realize who, how, you know, iconic these two, and Frank Welker was there on the first day too. So it was Frank mm-hmm. We and weren't Rob iconic yet. And Tress and me, okay? And they're all like, why is the guy from Motor <laughs> yeah. here? Right? You, know, yeah. you know, and I walk in there and, you know, I'm, I'm, we're kind of like, okay, this is Rob and this is Tress and, and they, they're gonna be working with you. Oh, great, man, great, great. So I sit down and they started doing stuff. And even <laughs> in that first episode, Rob was doing Yakko and then also Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Yeah. And immediately, even though I'd always been doing voices, as you know, since we were little kids and stuff, I thought, that's pretty good. He's having a conversation with us. <laughs> That's pretty bad. What he said. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what happened is on the break, <laughs> on the first break, they, 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 you know, they said, okay, it takes 20 minutes and I'll get to trust in a moment. But I went outside and, you know, quick, quick segue that, that it was a very, very big gift to me that I got to work with Rob on my first series. Because honest to goodness, I've told him this a million times. I sort of went, I want to be like that guy. Okay. Because he was always such a good Dude, he was such yeah. a good person. He was so kind to people and he remembered everybody's names and he was never, like I said, never a pain in the ass, always agreeable. And I went, hmm. I mean, I was never really not like that, right. but I thought, I'm going to be just like him. Like there's certain other people. Who've, the Motorhead that, version of yeah. Rob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Motorhead version. If I, if, if there, There's some other you know, oh. actors, God bless them, who if they'd been in that first session, I probably wouldn't have had a career because I would have thought it's good to be a dick and I would have acted badly. You know, and right. I didn't want to do that. So on the first coffee break we ever had, I walked up to Rob and I thought I should probably, you know, be friends with this guy because we're going to be working together. And, and I walked over <laughs> and I thought I need to say something intelligent to him. So, <laughs> I, went, I, so I went over and I and, and he looks up and he's very friendly. He goes, how you doing, man? You're doing, doing good in there. I said, oh, thank you. And then I said, you know, I have to say that 
I really like it when you make your voice sound like people that you're not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> he truly got the essence of the art. Wow, a prodigy was so, born. Yeah. So I said, let me come get your guy. <laughs> Get, get your guitar oh. tech and bring him in here. <laughs> and, well, and as far as as far as dress, you know, the the fir my first thoughts about her was that first of all, I thought she was lovely. I just thought, what what, She's what, a, what a beautiful you know, girl she is, you know. And and she, and she said, we'll well, and I always track. just thought my, my first. I don't know if I even told you this, but I always thought she really seems like a movie star. Man, oh. she just carried herself so well, and she seemed that. You know so, what? That's not yeah. Untrue. That but is I was so much older. No, 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 not yet. She no. has she, a presence. She has I a guess. presence. And she was and so. And a mystique. Yes. yes. And yes. she was so much classier than me and him. There's yeah. that. Wow. <laughs> Especially when you do that. Especially yeah. See, when that's, you yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what I mean. She but did that. You know what? I can tell you from experience, <laughs> pardon me, but there are a number of people <laughs> that I've experienced myself who've come up to me and said, oh my God, I work with Trish today. And I was scared. What? Not no, no. because you're just because of your presence, yes. not because of no. you being a diva or weird. Or Even anything. though that's true, because, because your, you your reputation, you <laughs> yeah. obviously, yeah. your talent is prodigious, and people yeah. know it. Right? They're just but, like, I better be on my A game. Yes, yeah. it, you're when a force people, of I, I had especially yeah. young yeah. women who said, "Oh my God, she was great," and yeah. and it blew my mind that I was working with Tress because they were. She, you have a presence, and it's yeah, she did. It's palpable. It does. is not a bad thing, but and you can't. Teach it. No, no, it's you don't. Innate. Innate. You don't. It's just, no. it's, it's just your yes. essence. Yes. And I yes. got very. And by the way, I should add that that Rob did yakko and scratch and sniff on that first day. And Tress, we had, and our, our first guest star that day, if you guys remember, was Dan Castellano, yeah. who plays Homer Simpson. He mm. did Dracula. That was the first day. Oh, we right. did that, and we did the psychiatrist episode where you're asking, you're got oh, the three. Desanitize. Yeah, right? desanitize. Tress did every female character on the whole show. Wow. All of them. Mm. Like they didn't bring in Fantastic. any other girls, and there must have been like six of them. And again, better I mean, not. I'd always done a lot of voices, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like as astounded as I might have been if I only did the one voice. But but I was like, oh, oh. oh so what'd wow. you say to Tress at the coffee break? She pulled out six. No, voices. you don't want to hear that. <laughs> and I, no, 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 I just, I just thought, I just. I thought, don't speak to the people during the break. <laughs> she wouldn't talk to me. She asked me to clean up her car. That's what she said. She said her she said, Will you go I'm shine? saving my. <laughs> Jess yes. actually said, "Are those real?" But he meant, <laughs> but he meant her eyebrows. Yeah, I did, I did, because oh, they were fantastic. Of course, it took a left hook for him to realize yeah. that he yes. said the wrong Everyone thing. Everyone knows yeah. Jesse's an eyebrow man. I'm an eyebrow yes. man. Are those an real eyebrow man. <laughs> I am an eyebrow. Man. No, but that was that's what I that's what I'd say. My impression of him was what what a great guy. My impression of her was wow. She seems I love it. She love seems it. like the queen of this room. I love she it. was and she is. Uh, Tress, your I first remember impression. very distinctly um, the first day I uh, met Rob. It was as he said. Uh, in the lobby of SBV, we were waiting to uh, be called into audition, and he was just this sweet, blonde, <laughs> adorable, and in a red, you know, hockey jersey. And we're all just shooting the breeze in the uh, in the lobby. And he dropped that he had. He said his wife, and I said, your wife? <laughs> because I, I, I really thought that he was about 18. <gasps> you know, because we had a children's department. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you could have been huge. <laughs> but um, but uh, he was very nice, and uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think that we were uh, friends right from, uh, the, from the get go, yeah. Immediately. And then oh, Jess, nice. Jess, yeah. I, I remember story, we had a right? studio there in uh, in, uh, in, in Coinga Boulevard, that the Centrum building or whatever, with that yes. brick thing. Yeah, and that. we were doing a game for Disney. Oh, and was I that think before Animaniacs? Huh? Was that before Animaniacs? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. It was. Uh, you were temping for Roger Rabbit. I was doing Roger Rabbit. And yes. so it was something for a, a, a board game oh, or some gosh. kind of a, a thing for the park. Wow. And uh, and Rick Dempsey was there, uh, 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 directing the session. And I was doing the, uh, the voices of, uh, I don't know, Daisy Duck or Chip or- Or one of them. One of several. Right. Yeah. Classic <laughs> one of many. Anyway, many. that's on the right now. Yes. IMDB. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so he, and you came into the studio and you know, he's wild. <laughs> and you know, got the melon head and the hair and the eyes this big and friendly and everything. Never seen this guy before before in my life. And and he's hey, have you been all friendly and everything? 
And um, I said, who the hell is that? <laughs> and She still and, says that. Yeah. And I mean, no, I mean, not like, how dare you? Or it's yeah. just like, what is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Rick said, well, that's Jess Harnell. He's our new Roger Rabbit. Yeah. I went, oh. oh. <laughs> and, is he now? And he's and all that, right. And that was the first time oh. that I met you. How about that? Hi, so Grammy. I remember Hilarious. you're sitting back in the dark going, <laughs> you know, he had an issue, and I'm just going, yeah. Oh, I was oh, excited, man. What the hey, not in You know what, Tress? Oh, the first time I met Jesse, uh, I had said, the same yeah. thing to me. I went, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> People still do that yeah. all the time. Perpetual okay. motion. Yes. God, God Yes, God all good. Us. So, oh, good. All, all jokes aside, um, it's fun. if there ever was a time when your career was not so rosy, how did you navigate that? Did you ever mm. say like, I can't, or what got you through to the other side of the not so peachy? Oh boy, peachy. You, you hit the nail mm. on the head there. I am, um, I mean, we all had uh, slow periods, uh, but I went through the slowest period of my career probably eight, nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Right after you won the Emmy, right? Uh, well, it was, a f- it was after I won the Emmy. Uh, I was, I did go through a period, it was, it was weird. I, oh, I won an Emmy, and I I, as much as I don't want to give it back, the Emmy in, in our business, the Emmy in four bucks will get you a latte. Right. Mm. And I went through an experience where people, like it got a little bit slow. You're right, Tress. And I'd meet people at parties, producers with whom I'd worked for years, and they'd say, oh, man, congratulations. Saw you on TV. Oh, what a lovely speech, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, boy, I sure wish we could afford you. And I'm like, wow. Mm. What? Oh, what? Scale, what you mean? About? And there was this, it's not like, it's not like winning an Emmy for... A, a, a sitcom or winning an Oscar, yeah, your price doesn't go through the roof. And yeah. I went through a period where people were like, oh, you know, it doesn't change at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can't afford you because you won the. They didn't bother wow. asking, so wow. figured that out. But then, yeah, probably eight or nine years ago, I went through a period where it just dried up. It just did, and I remember Frank Welker uh, telling me, um, you know, there will be, and he had said he'd gone through it. Um, and it's kind of a left-handed compliment. That is to say, look, we've used you a lot. We love you. But as there should be, we got some new people to try out. That's exactly the way it should be. Yeah. I, it wasn't personal. It wasn't um, anything that folks <laughs> do go people. through. You she know? did the tongue again. Shepard she Trent. didn't like that. She did um, the Gene Simmons. She didn't I like I want him dead. I want his family <laughs> dead. I want his house <laughs> breaking the ground. <laughs> um, but I was really, it, it, it was... Brutal, and I did the worst thing you can do, which is panic. Mm. And it didn't matter that my friends, Maurice or Tress or whomever, would say, "Dude, come on, you're Rob. You're going to get through this." Yeah. And I thought, "This is it." Is I'm mm-hmm. like one mm-hmm. of those people who we said, "Man, they're great, but for whatever reason, fill in the blank." Right. And um, I lived the axiom that uh, necessity is the mother of invention or fear is a great motivator. Because after going through a period where I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I started worrying about the money, which is exactly the wrong thing to do because Mm -hmm. the only reason I make any money is that I focus on the joy that I derive from doing what I would essentially do for free, Mm -hmm. and the money takes care of itself. There you go, buddy. But I fell into that trap. Also, I was in my 50s. I wasn't like a newbie. And I had, you know, a couple of mortgages and all that stuff. So the practical aspects of a slow period started to really work on me. And um, what what one day I had had enough of of being uh, feeling sorry for myself. And I, I literally had started being guests on podcasts. And I looked at my phone and I said, you know, you don't have to be an MIT grad to do a podcast. No offense. Yeah. I'm taken. Um, Very true. I'm a right. Juilliard but, grad. And, no, and this is way more sophisticated than they used to be, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. So I thought, wait a minute. I looked at my cell phone and I said, to the extent that there are people interested in people who do voices for a living on the most popular cartoon shows in the universe, I can call them up. I can call Tress. I can call Jess. I can call Mark Hamill. I can call yeah. Billy West. I can call Nancy Carvin. I can call Dan Castellaneta. I can call John De- <clears throat> Tara Strong. You Everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought, well, let's see what happens. Do I'm going to take my little USB mic, plug it into my mic, and my, then I'll call Maurice. Yeah, come on over to my house. Yeah. And I was on to something. Mm-hmm. There was, it took me seven years to monetize my podcast. 
but it wasn't about that. It was about getting my creative juices flowing and focusing on the joy you of doing this gig. Yes. Yes. His career. Focus yeah. on the really, abundance and, and not what, the lack. What yeah. it was, was a brilliant opportunity for me to do something that I had no, I didn't do it for any other reason, you guys, other than to quit feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. Nobody forced, my, forced me at gunpoint to be an actor. Boo hoo, it went south for a while. Showbiz. Your parents yeah. tried to tell you. They tried yeah, they to tell did. me. And yeah. I got out of my house and I started talking to my friends and one thing led to another. And what it did, you guys, was to uh, enervate my, what it was that got me from Flint, Michigan to Hollywood 41 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The love and the joy of working with all these creative people and doing something that makes my soul happy. There you go. Money yeah. wasn't the object. Yeah. Within a few months, I'd heard about, uh, my agent called and said, hey, you know, they're auditioning for Ninja Turtles again. I said, you're kidding. Mm. Well, they want you to read. Are you, do they know who I am? Not out of arrogance, because this was 20 years after Ninja Turtles, yeah. and they had gone yeah. on to do a bunch of different yeah. iterations, yeah. and I didn't want to get in there and have them say, oh. Oh, we're sorry. He was Raphael. Oh, well, he's here. Throw him a bone, let him read. Yeah. No. It was like, oh, we know exactly who he is. We grew up watching him. We just think he might be... I got the job. Yeah, how about yeah. That? and it was wow. absolutely because I was not worried about the money. I was I was able to leverage myself out of that mess. So, and cool. whether it's a slow period, whether it's your health, whether it's a death, a divorce, or whatever it is, we all go through our. Yeah. It doesn't have to be showbiz. It can be anything. Yeah, yeah And we sure. all life is like that. Yeah. But I'm grateful that I had people around me who were not only encouraging. Uh, but said, oh, you know, if you want to give it up, that's fine. Yeah. But don't give it up because you don't think yeah. there's anything left in the tank. Yeah. When you yeah. can try a way to focus on yeah. the abundance and not the yes. lack yeah. in your life, there then you that's as precisely soon as you when the stuff focus changes. Off of your problem, yeah. precisely it changes. You started doing yeah. what you do. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. It was for the, the joy. And <clears throat> I had had the good fortune of being of knowing what the joy of my gig was about. Yeah. The, the difficulty for me was finding a way to get back to that. Mm. It turns out that it was as often. How many times do people write books about, thank God I went through. Yeah. It's, it, it is exactly what has gotten me to a position now where I can argue myself mm. that this is the best time of my career. Mm. Crazy. You asked yeah. me that question nine years ago, oh, yeah. I would have <clears> said, oh my yeah. God, it's yeah. a good thing I don't like to drink. <laughs> yeah, because I've been in ah, trouble. It's over, yeah. Yeah. But it, it's amazing what happens when you focus on gratitude and what you can. It's not showbiz. It's life. It's life. Yeah. Yeah. It is profoundly impactful. Totally. And, and it's not magical. It, it, it feels magical, but you can read book after book after book after book. Yeah, about about uh, how to win friends and influence people. About uh, mm. uh, the the, uh, um, the 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 magic, the, the joy of gratitude. Um, think and grow rich. Mm. Yeah. What these books have been written a hundred years and ago. They still, yeah. they still, still apply. Wrote those things. Yeah. Concepts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not magical. They're timeless. Yeah. But when you're in the middle of it, to find it sometimes is difficult. It's hard. When you can tap into it, whether it's flower making, working on cars, or being an actor, or having a podcast. It is miraculous what happens, but the formula is not miraculous. Yeah. It's right there in front of you. Well, that concludes part two with the Animaniacs, but guess what? We're coming back next week with part three. Yes. And it is insane. It is. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow all of us on social. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you, and just remember, you, you always have time for a little life. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.